Let's take our Bibles tonight, Hebrews chapter number 4. Hebrews chapter number 4. Did you know that God is pro-coffee? We know that because of this book, He Brews. He Brews. Forgive me, Brother Jeremy, it's taken me four chapters to get to that joke. That's one of the corniest jokes that has ever been told, and many of you didn't laugh because you've heard it a million times, and I thought, I have not mentioned it yet, and we're almost, well, not halfway through the book, but a quarter of the way through the book, and have not even talked about God's love for coffee. And uh, I don't know, that, that might not be proper exegesis, but <laughs> we'll take it. Hebrews chapter 4, if you'll stand please for the reading of God's word tonight. Hebrews chapter 4, we'll begin reading in verse number 14. And as you're finding it, let me just encourage you, this summer you might have plans to do a lot of things, but can I encourage you just be faithful to God's house, be faithful to soul winning, uh, take vacations, do fun stuff, uh, do extra work. Uh, many of you, maybe your schedules is about the same in summer, and you say summer's just, just kind of normal for me. Be faithful to the house of God. And I'm thankful for all the maybe extra things folks might try to do in summer. Uh, but don't just skip church because, well, the game's on, or it's kind of warm out. We, we have air conditioning in Patty Pewson here, too. And I, I pray that you would be faithful to the Lord's house this summer. And uh, we're in Hebrews 4, verse 14 tonight. The Bible says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest... That is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest, which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may, may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Father, as we come to you, this is a time of need. Father, it's a time of need for us personally. It's a time of need for us as a church. It's a time of need for our nation and for the entire world, for all of humanity. And Father, I pray that as we come to you, Lord, we'd find that help. We know you're the, the help giver. And Father, we bring our burdens to you and we get the help in, 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 in return. And I pray you'd help us here this evening as we look at your word. I ask us in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> the overlying theme of this book, again, is that Jesus is better He's better than anything in the world, and He's always going to be the best. We've looked this far that He's better than the prophets. And chapter 1 begins in that the, the Word of God has been given. And by the mouth of the prophets, it's been given that even in the prophets, Jesus is better. He's better than the angels. Angels were revered in Jewish culture. And even in the angels, Jesus is better. He's better than Moses, maybe one of the most revered men in Jewish culture, maybe next to Abraham was Moses, the one who God used to, to give the law. And, Mo, and it's been described already and given that Jesus is better than, yes, the lawgiver Moses. Jesus is better. Last week we looked at the rest that he gives. Oftentimes in this time of year we think of rest and maybe time off and time to get away, and that's great for all those things. And even though we do that in this world, what happens? We get rest, and then we get back, and we need more rest. Man, I'm thankful that the rest we get in this world is not the rest we have to look forward to. He speaks of an eternal rest. And yes, I believe there's practical application there. God gave us the, the Sabbath day as that picture that it's okay to go to sleep at night. It's okay to rest your body. It's okay to get nourishment. And yes, take that rest and get back to work. But one day we will have that eternal rest. And then now it's described in this way that he's better than, and I love that he goes through these parts of the book. You know, you could really just write Hebrews 1 through 13, Jesus is better, and that's the book. Uh, but in a beautiful way, God uses this uh, uh, book to, to describe how he's better. And in this, we look at this, that he's better as a priest. He's a better priest. Priests were very important in Jewish culture. He is our great high priest as described in verse 14, if you look there, it says, Seeing then we have a great high priest that has passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. And in an overwhelming way throughout the whole book of Hebrews, <coughs> we see our Lord and Savior described as our high priest. Now we as New Testament Christians, in our, in our period of grace, in our modern culture, we don't relate with the priestly duties as much as Old Testament prophets, Old Testament Christians, Old Testament believers, or even here in the first century church. Why? Because most of you didn't grow up with a priest, or if you did, it was a false version of a priest. 
But here in the Bible, we see that there is a better priest, better than Aaron, and better than anyone in the line of Aaron, and that is Jesus Christ. And we'll look at what this means here tonight. But really, overwhelming all throughout this book, we see Jesus described in this way as our great high priest. Number one, our great high priest triumph. Our great high priest triumph. You think about this, the Jews, they always could count on the high priest. They could always count on the priest going to God before them. Now, you know this, that you'll stand before God one day and you will give an account of your actions. You will give an account of what you did for the Lord. I do not believe that the judgment seat of Christ is a place of judgment in the fact that we are judged for our sins, we are judged for our transgressions. We are judged for the mistakes we've made. Why? Because we are covered and atoned for those. I believe that it is a place of reward. And it might go more like this. What did you do with all that I gave to you? It's a reward seat that we will stand before the Lord one day. It is the great white throne judgment where all lost people will be judged for their sins. But praise God as a Christian, your sins are covered. Your sins are atoned past, present, and future. But the Jews always had that priest, a priest that they could count on, a priest that would go before them to atone for their sins, a priest that would give the sacrifice for them, a priest that would stand between them and God on their behalf. Remember, in this time, the temple was still there, and so they, they saw the priestly duties being enacted. They saw the priests going and still doing the duties of a priest. Since the beginning of Aaron, this ministry was a ministry of service 